Hello, Slicey Dicers, on a different night than usual. Thank you guys for coming out. Probably won't have as many people on as usual. I'm sorry to do it on a weird night. But you know what? As I said in the title of this, uh, my wife's away tonight. She is uh, babysitting for somebody. So I am here all alone. And uh, she'll be back tomorrow night. And I'd like to spend some time with her tomorrow night. So I thought instead of doing a live show tomorrow, I'll do it tonight. So thank you guys for show for showing up. Sorry, Norman in here. Good to see you, Jonathan, Keith, Ohio Knife Lover. Hey guys, good to have you on here. Yeah, we're getting up pretty good. We already got nine on here. Hopefully, we can get up to our usual seventy to a hundred or so. We'll see. We'll see. Probably not, because it's a weird night, and I don't know if anybody else does live shows right now. I apologize if I'm stepping on somebody's toes. I didn't check that, but uh, I, I think that Saturday Night Live is much later than this. It's not until like one in the morning my time. So I'm trying not to uh, not to uh, get in anybody's way. Hey, junk rat! Thanks for coming out. I know there's, how's your week been? Uh, annoying. My week has been annoying. I've got people working in my house. It is horribly frustrating, especially when you're trying to use, trying to make videos and they're using power tools. I rent and they decided to uh, replace a lot of my flooring, which is great. It looks really good, but they just, they didn't give me much notice. I'm having to move furniture around. It's a huge pain in the butt having, when they put floors in that you can't walk on for an hour or two. That's really annoying. So, um, yeah, going Matt Baker says, going to see the thing on big screen at midnight. Oh, cool. Uh, what beer today? It's the same as last week. I didn't go get more because, like, again, I said this was a uh, unplanned one. So this is uh, just another Jenny tall boy. I had to buy a bunch of these. This is the best beer, I think, for a beer batter for uh, fish fry. But I had to get, like, a 12-pack of them, and it's uh, taking a long time to get through them. <laughs> so I still got it. Same beer unsubbed. I'm sorry. I am getting some cool stuff, though. Uh, somebody... One of a uh, guy who uh, uh, bought a knife from me and sent me one to work on is uh, also apparently a brewer. So I'm going to have some cool stuff the next few weeks. When I was abandoned to your knife room, isn't a bad thing. No, it isn't. I always feel guilty when I'm up here doing the live stream and she's downstairs watching her murders or ghosts or whatever it is she watches on. It's always murders or ghosts. And I'm up here yakking with you guys. So tonight is guilt free. I may even go a bit longer. We'll see. So, um, any news in the new house? No, we're going to go look at one tomorrow, but I think it's too small. We're not even in, in the position to really make an offer yet. We're just kind of looking at stuff. We'll see. I mean, I've just, you watch Criminal Minds when it's on, but it's mostly, uh, like true murder stuff, like ID channel and, um, ghost hunters stories and stuff like that. So I don't mind the murders, the ghost ones. I don't, I don't like, they're not real. They're just not real. Anyway, got a few knives out here for you um, to talk about. Another thing I want to talk about tonight, it's something I really wanted to promote, is I said I was going to do this really cool giveaway at 50 subs on my Patreon. So 50 patrons, whatever I'm supposed to call it. I'm at 49. So if I get one more patron tonight, then I will be doing a giveaway. It is a Patreon exclusive only one. I don't usually do these. That's the wrong knife. I almost grabbed the wrong one. They look very similar. That would have been bad. I'm not giving that one away. Uh, this Kershaw Knockout and M390. I rarely do Patreon exclusive giveaways, but this time I am. So there you go. M390. All I got to do is one more sub, and then tomorrow I will do a random drawing amongst my patrons, and I will probably just privately notify you because I guess Patreon doesn't like you doing that. I did not know that, so... um we're going to do that. And I have crossed the $200 threshold, so there will be another giveaway later in the week. Um, I'm going to try and do those once a month for something in the 50 ish dollar range. And that will be this that I put way too far away. CRKT Monashi will be another one I'll be doing. So two Patreon giveaways this week, so check that out. Like I said, I'm probably just going to notify you privately that you won. Um, get your address, all that kind of stuff. But it'd be really cool if I got this uh, hit 50 tonight because uh, tomorrow is Monday. It's a holiday. I'm doing a lot of pack and ship tomorrow. So this would go out the next day. So that'd be really, really cool. All right. Uh, that is it. What new stuff have I gotten in? I've got a lot of it here. A lot of it you've already seen on the channel. Some of it you have not. Uh, you guys saw my Hinder Half Track. It's a USMA Blade exclusive. That's why I have my USMA Blade koozie on here. Uh, the Half Track Warncliffe Gen 2 in the bronze. 
really, 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 really like this knife. It's uh, It's been great the last few days. I've really enjoyed having it around. Um, the 8010 I did last week, I got that from uh, Southern Edge Knife Works. SouthernEdgeKnifeWorks.com. By the way, 15% off. 15% off if you use the code SD, S-E-K at checkout. And free shipping, which is pretty freaking awesome. There's a link to them down below in the description. Awesome discount they're giving you guys. I don't get a percentage of that, but they do hook me up with some knives for battles to the death. And uh, that's how I got this 8010. And also, I just really want an 8010 back. And yes, that is the new steel wheel somebody asked about. This is the Screamer. This is a pretty, pretty knife. And it has cat hair on it already, so you know it's mine. A really, really beautiful knife. Not just good looking for a budget knife. This is just plain ass good looking. I really, really, really like it. I like the blue. I don't know how they make their anodization so blue. I love this blade. It is very sharp. I can attest to this. I did cut myself quite badly today. Um, I almost thought I was going to need stitches. It was, it's, it's, it's pretty nasty under there. Trust me. It was my own stupid fault, not the knife's fault. I was cutting the wrong way. I went, Deek. and uh, yeah, not good. Don't do that. Just don't do that. It's a beautiful knife, though, and it is on bearings, so it has that really good action. I'm probably going to do the review of this tomorrow night. Um, I've had this for a couple days, and I've been using it quite a bit, mostly on you know, cutting fingers. And <laughs> uh, since we're not having a bruising blades tomorrow night, I wanted to have kind of a cool review up, so I'm probably just gonna I'm probably gonna do this one tomorrow night. Um, it's really really good, really like it. D2, like most steel wheels are now. D2 G10. And then also from uh, Southern Edge Knife Works, this is a knife that I am gonna use in a couple of battles to the death. They sponsor the battle to the death now, uh, but also one I just really wanted, Valet from Benchmade. I've always really liked these. I've never gotten one. I think they're the most underrated thing that Benchmade makes. They're great little knives. And just never really got one. And it's unique in a Benchmade in that uh, it's pretty darn good value. 175 bucks in M390. So for a Benchmade, that, that's really surprising. So uh, yeah, I really like this. They're making, they made them for all, lots of years. And they come in a few special editions and that kind of stuff. But this one is also very widely available. What is it? The 535, 565. I already, I've already put there four, four something. 485. I've already put it over there, so I don't remember what the model is. But beautiful knife. Just really classy. Not terribly big, as you can see. Put against the mini. This is the mini bug out. It's about the same size as the mini bug out. So, yeah. Not a big knife at all. But I may even do a battle to the death with these two, because this is only like 2.2 ounces. This isn't very heavy either. And uh, about the same size. I don't know. We'll see. Uh... I really love that void, yeah, so do I. I've been neglecting it. I haven't carried it for a few days, but... Oh, that action is just stupid. It's just so good. Definitely the smoothest knife that I own by quite a long bit. It's nigh on perfect. really love this thing. Um, what do we have, do we have coming up this week? Um, I'll show you that here in a minute. I'm going to catch up on the questions here for a moment, so... The anodation of their blue is just gorgeous. Yeah, it is. The modus has that my modus has the same thing on the back of it. I don't know what it is. It's just iridescent almost. I don't know how they do it. Um and, uh, oh, there's lavender pants. Uh, if you could have only one. Oh, half track warning or Koenig Mini Goblin if you could only have one. Um, well, I it, it would be the it'd probably be this, because I I've had a uh, I had the opportunity to buy a mini goblin and I didn't I, I did. I liked it. It was beautiful, beautifully made, and the action was amazing. But it just didn't fit my hand quite right. Couldn't really uh, put my uh, put my finger on it. Keith just pushed us over fifty on the Patreon. Thanks, Keith. I appreciate that. And oh yeah, by the way, the uh, super chat is open down below. I always forget to pimp that. Kick in a few shekels if you want. But yeah, let's. Uh, we're at fifty now, so that means I'm going to do the drawing tomorrow. So if you guys want to get going on that Patreon thing and you want a chance to win the Kershaw Knockout and M390, the USMA Blade exclusive, courtesy of USMA Blade. Uh, go do that, and you can win one. But it is for Patreon people only this time. I'm not going to do those very often, but only when I'm trying to hit a certain goal. So when I get close to 100, I'll probably do another one. But um, yeah, it's not going to be a regular thing. People get really upset when you do Patreon exclusive giveaways, but um, it's it's just to hit certain milestones. It's not going to be a regular thing, except for the 
every month I'm going to do something cheaper, like a $50 thing or something, you know, for the Patreon people. Hello, Ocon. How's it going, man? Good to see you. Sean Amon says, nice mini bug out order my few days ago. You know, I'm really liking this. This is, it's actually grown on me. I'm st I still don't like the white. I st I'm still not a fan of that. I can change it if I want to, but I have this plan for some battles to the death, so I want to keep it looking stock. Once those are done, it's going to be purple. Uh, yeah, I think purple and black would look pretty darn cool. So I've already got the dye for it. I'm itching to do it. I wanted to do it today, but I'm like, no, I've got, I've got comparison videos. They sh it should look stock in the comparison videos, so I'm leaving it. And I'm not going to buy another one just to dye it. I'm not, I'm not Zach from Zach stuff. <laughs> it's like nine of every bug out in a million different things. Michael says, someone rudely interrupted me watching when you were discussing this deal. Well, what model is that? It's the Screamer. It's the, um, what is it? Uh, F-73. I, I don't think they are in stores yet. I get, I get, uh, stealable stuff pretty early. Um, yeah, they sent me this one along and I, I'm not sure they're in stores, but, uh, they're going to be like next week if they're not. You can get them from steelwill.com right now, but they're a little more expensive. They'll be in right, your favorite knife retailer everywhere for less money shortly. Um, but it's gorgeous. I just, I just love it. All the, look at that. Look at that hole in there and the blade. Look at the blade hole, the deployment hole. God, that is just, that is awesome. And then it matches on the scales. The black doesn't show it as well. It comes in a bunch of different colors also, but. Oh, such a good-looking knife. That Screamer is very inspired by the Void. I wouldn't say that. I, I, they just both have deployment holes. I don't really see that much. And the blade, the Void looks like um, other knives, too. So it's just a pretty common way that knives look now. It's just modern style. Hole! Oh, um, can you middle flick the Screamer? Yes, absolutely. It's very easy to do because the way they chamfer that hole out. It's super easy in a middle flick. Yeah, it's a very great knife. Like I said, you'll have to see the review tomorrow night. The full review. It even has more voids than the voids, Steve says. No, actually, the there is a void that has another hole there. I'm all about those holes, yep. Oh, Con, what did you say? What's next? Uh... Trade me anything video. That was fun. Yeah, I've got a knife all picked out for it. I'm going to try and get that up this week because that was a lot of fun. I did really enjoy that. I know what knife it's going to be. Um, it's probably actually going to be two. I think I'm going to do a, a package of two knives now because uh, one isn't really one isn't really that expensive or unique. So it's going to be something pretty inexpensive than something pretty unique. So uh, it'll be fun. Am I the only one who isn't a huge fan of oblong holes? No, you're not. Definitely the dog. And no, uh, a lot of people don't like it. So what's the steal on what? This is D2. I don't know if that, that was the last thing I was talking about. So assume that's what you're asking about. Um, oh, thank you, Michael. I appreciate it. And you're very welcome for the answer. That's what I'm here for. Well, the void looks like a Ferrum Forge design, so the Screamer looks inspired by Ferrum Forge. Yeah, exactly, Steve. It's just everybody's, it's not, it's not copying. It's just that that's what, it's just kind of design language goes. It's just like how all modern small crossovers look, look the same, like a Honda CRV or a Toyota RAV4. You can't tell the difference by looking, unless you look at the badge. It's just, a lot of knives are this kind of general sort of shape right now. It's just popular, and that's just kind of what everybody's doing. Um, uh, Damon says, what are your thoughts on Leong Ma designs? I really do like those a lot. They're very, very good. Um, I've owned a, one. I think I owned one. I don't remember which one it was. I've reviewed a few. I always really like them. Um, a Honda doesn't look like a Mini Cooper. No, because it's a completely different thing. You're not making any sense, Steve. It's a totally different thing. I'm just saying, if you're designing a knife in that kind of size, that's kind of what a lot of people are doing. I know what I mean, and I know I'm right. Uh, Jonathan Watts says, I'm excited I got a new Inbox Shaman on the secondary market for 155 That's a good deal. That's a very good deal. How's the warning been for you? Pretty good. I haven't been able to use it a whole lot because I got a whole lot of new stuff coming in that I got to review, but uh, I'm really liking it. It's a, it's a hinderer. I like hinderers. I love half tracks. I like warnings. It was, it was pretty obvious I was going to like it. Cooper is much smaller than a CRV, Steve. I'm done arguing with you about this. I said all compact crossovers and SUVs. I didn't say all compact cars. Listen to me, Steve. Listen to me. I'm going to drink more beer because Steve is frustrating me as he always is. 
Um, it uh, depends on the kind of Honda. Yeah, Steve doesn't listen to anybody. No, he just wanted to make me drink. You drove me some. You drove me back to alcoholism. I don't think you can go back. I don't think I can't go back to something you haven't really completely ever stopped. <laughs> um, have your hands on a Benchmade Tengu yet? No, I didn't. Um, I'm probably not going to unless they offer to send me one, which that's not going to happen. I, I really love it. It's a beautiful knife, but um, I don't really like stuff without pocket clips. So um, I'm not really too revved up about that. It's beautifully done, but... I don't know. Just everything I buy with a pocket without a pocket clip, I don't wind up carrying. I'm weird. Yeah, that's why I don't do a lot of traditionals. I don't like stuff banging around in my pocket without a pocket clip on. I'm very particular about that kind of stuff. Um, I do have a cool thing coming up that I'm probably gonna put up Monday morning, an actual review of this wallet, but I'm gonna give you a little a little teaser, a little special thing about it. So this is a wallet from Night Heron Leather. Uh, awesome company. Um, really nice products. You may notice that it looks uh, color-wise uh, very much like a Slicey Dicey logo. Uh, this is uh, this is came much more gray than it is, but carrying it for a week, it's, you know, oils from your hand and stuff. It is turning a bit more brown than it was. But purple leather, purple stitching, um, it's a really nice knife. They're not horribly expensive. They're like uh, 45 bucks or something like that. Not bad at all. And uh, you may, if you guys are interested, when I, I'll mention it at the end of the review, um, be able to buy these with my logo stamped in it right here, and I'll get a little little piece of it. Um, probably going to order them straight from them, not from me, uh, but I thought it would be cool, and I feel like a fashion designer now because I chose the colors and the stitching and all that, and it came out cool, and I like the way it looks, and it's a really nice wallet, and I think it's a very good value, and uh, just put my, put my little logo on it and have a little Slicey Dicey Special Edition wallet. It'll be neat. I'm not going to sign them or anything. Don't worry about that. But uh, yeah, this is it's pretty cool. As you can see, and also, by the way, this is an object lesson for you. Um, don't make jokes at the lady at the DMV when she's taking your picture or she gets mad and you wind up with your face looking like a thumb. So yeah, yeah. Look at all those bills. Yeah, they are. Uh, I actually went and got cash because I don't ever carry cash. So to do the wallet review, no, it's a tenner and a bunch of ones. So it's not a lot. <laughs> I don't keep a, I don't carry cash. I just never do. But yeah, don't don't joke with the lady at the, at the DMV where you get that. She made me like put my head all the way against the back wall so I look like a thumb. Like a murderous thumb. Um, face look more like a big toe. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, I do have a huge head. So that is, that is more accurate. I think my my hat size is like seven and five eighths or something like that. I look forward to my slicey dicey loafers. Yeah, that would, yeah, that I, I don't wear loafers, but I'm a fashion designer now. I'm gonna add that to my uh, business card. Writer, comedian, YouTuber, fashion designer. Uh, yeah, one of my buddies who will remain nameless. We had a bunch of cameras and he helped this woman film a, uh, um, not an erotic video exactly. It was like some weird fetishy thing. And it wasn't like, there wasn't even any nudity in it. But, uh, his, his, um, business card says, uh, comedian pornographer. <laughs> it's just, that's a great business card. Uh, I'm not going to, I'm not, they held it, Steve, and I'm not going to show that. You know that. He insulted my, my looks. I, I just look like a thumb in that picture. That's not how I look in daily life. Or a big toe. Is, I'm going to go with big toe from now on. It does look more like a big toe. And you know what's the great thing about it in the wonderful state of New York? Because I'm going to be stuck with that picture. It's about two years old, so I'm going to be stuck with that picture for six years. All I did was that that's what they call here. I don't know if you guys have it in your state. If you live in a border state, you can get what they call an enhanced driver's license. So it means that I'm allowed to drive into Canada and Mexico, I guess, without having a passport. I just have to wave it. Sometimes I don't have to stop. It's got an RFID chip and I just wave it. And uh, I, when I was filling it out for the enhanced driver's license, she's sitting there typing, clattering away pretty young, fairly attractive woman. And I was just trying to make a joke. And I said, so does the enhanced driver's license mean that I get to drive faster than everybody else? 
she looked up at me and just glared at me and said, it just means you can drive into Canada. And I said, oh, can I drive faster than everybody else in Canada? And then she looked back up at me and said, I don't care. And then took that picture and it was very bad. <laughs> so I don't think she liked my jokes. I can't, I, I know, I can't believe it's true either. I, I thought everybody liked my jokes. But um, yeah, she was not not happy. I did notice something. I, I posted a picture of the valet on Instagram today because I just got it, but um, I didn't notice. I should have posted it with this. How good do those look together? And the valet does fit in the fifth pocket. So, oh, that's a nice pairing, isn't it? Mm, both the gray G10. Yeah, that's going to that's gonna be a, a double shot that's going to be in my pocket a whole lot, probably tomorrow even. That's just cool. I like how well they match. I like my knives to match. I would say I'm weird, but I'm talking to you guys. We have 75 people hanging out on a Saturday night instead of going out talking about knives. So obviously you guys are just as weird as I am. I've been on a bit of a, by the way, a bit of a bronze kick lately. I know you guys always say I'm boring. Is bronze still boring? What's your opinion? Is bronze boring? I got, you guys saw this already. My Ferrum Forge exec. Yeah, <laughs> Steve's at the club right now. Are you sitting in the back? Throwing one dollar bills while watching your phone, and I also reacquired a mass drop Laconico Keen, and they're all bronze. So I guess I'm, I guess I'm in kind of a bronze kick lately. I guess I'm in a kind of a bronze. Maybe you should take <laughs> leave comedian off your card. Ha ha! Very funny junk rat. I've actually got a lot of gigs coming up. I should probably post them on the. If you guys live in the area, I've got a lot of gigs coming up. If you guys live in the uh, Western New York area, and some of them are pretty cool. Um, I'm opening for uh, Jamie Lissau at the club in March. And then, and um, who Jimmy Lissau, if you don't know, he's he's a Rochester guy, but he's a, he was on um, that Showtime, was it? Show with uh, Rob Schneider and uh, co-wrote that and... He's a, a pretty big deal. Funniest clip on YouTube ever. He electrocuted himself on stage once uh, accidentally, which is hilarious. Um, and then um, uh, I'm opening for Jay Moore in June. My good buddy Jay Moore. I like him a lot. I love working with him. And uh, Earl David, David Earl Reed at some point in between then. And then some other little one-nighters places and stuff. But yes, bronze is cool. Red Dog says, yes, it is the bronze. <laughs> That's right, Ronan. It is the bronze age. It is the bronze age of the Slicey Dicey channel. Uh, don't have a Keen anymore. Just got a Yorkie and surprised how much I like it. I really like the Yorkie lavender pants, but it just was a bit too small for me. That was a loner from somebody, and I thought I was probably going to instantly go buy one, and, and then I just didn't. But some of the, it was just a plain one. Some of the, the uh, like, Anno versions and stuff are pretty darn cool looking. But I love the Keen. I this is what I wanted when I got a Keen. Part of the reason why I sold my Keen because I wanted this one, and then I didn't get it. I wound up with a three-hole plain gray one, and um, it I loved it, but I don't know, it just didn't really click, and I sold it. And now made a trade with a buddy and got the one that I wanted. So, and it was it's brand freaking new. He never carried it. I know it's got the old logo and stuff on it, but uh, yeah, it was never carried, never torn apart or anything. It will be. It will be. I'll definitely be taking it apart. I like in the void. I love it. It's fantastic. We talked about it a minute ago, but yeah, it's 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 just it's probably my favorite knife that I own right now. It is amazing. Um Hello, Mr. Pants. Ohio knife lovers. I would love that. I would love to be called Mr. Pants. The keen is just such a straightforward. Yeah, a lot of Laconico stuff is to the point that some of it's a, a bit not, I mean, you can't call it derivatives the same guy, but a lot of it is kind of, you know, not cut and paste, but a lot of it does look very similar. But uh, this, the the Keen is still my favorite one, even amongst the, like the Easy I love the Easy C. It's really nice too, the EWC. Um, I, I like those two, but I don't know, I still like the Keen better. It's still my favorite Laconico. Super Steel Steve says, 8015 is trash. Shut your mouth, Steve. I love the 8015. I love the 8015. I may or may not have one in the mail, actually. <laughs> so, yeah. I may or may not. I don't want to spoil my uh, Knife So Nice I Bought Them Twice video that I'm going to be doing as soon as 
what is or is not an 8015 shows up in my house is. But uh, the 8015 is awesome. And now that it's all black, it looks badass. I want an 8015 and an, and an 8010 and a Formax Scout. That I may maybe, possibly, I'm going to have all three of those within the next several days. And maybe or maybe not, possibly, I'm going to do a little buyer's guide to uh, the larger Andrew Demko Cold Steel designs. Because I think that I'm not going to do a battle to the death with the three of them. But um, I think uh, I think it'd be an interesting video. Don't you just show like the differences, show them side by side. If you're looking for a big, beefy Andrew Demko, you know, Cold Steel, check those out. Um, Matt Baker says, I would trade my 8010 and 8015 for a Warney XM18. Yeah, I might. Eh, I, you know, I'm not the biggest. I mean, I mean, I know I have an XM18 and I love it. And uh, it's not my favorite hinderer, though. The Formax original is just not worth it compared to the Scout. Yeah, probably not. But like I, I saw, I watched a video today actually with uh, Lynn Thompson, and he was saying part of the reason why they came out with the Scout wasn't even it's just that they can't make they physically cannot make the the regular Formaxes fast enough, and they're always delayed, and there's always waiting lists. And I mean, I know there isn't right now at the moment, but probably because the Scout's out. And he just thought, let's make something cheaper that we can make faster. I think a new USA Mayblade Hinder exclusive will be an Eclipse. I hope so, because I love the Eclipse, but I don't love the Spanto. And uh, I don't hate it. I don't. It's not horrible, but I would love to see it in a slicer grind. Or and I don't think they, I don't think they're going to do a warning again because they just did one. But uh, I'd love to see this in a slicer grind. I think this is the most unsung hero of the Hinder lineup. This is just a really cool knife and. Uh, nobody talks about it the eclipse 3.0 so yeah i'm hoping it'll be a slicer eclipse or a spear point even better that would be cool i don't have any of the spear points yet so it would be neat your favorite hinder is an xm18 warney fat boy yeah i've never had one of the fatties Love my bronze Anno Keen, such a simple boss design. Yeah, and that bronze, the, the bronze finish that they do. I mean, these are both made by Wii, so different shades, but it's still that same kind of finish. I just love the way that Wii finishes off their bronze finish. It's just it's just pretty. This is a bit more of a green tinge to it almost, kind of like a uh, corroded bronze or something maybe, but yeah, but you can see it's basically the same finish. And yes, yeah, Steve, I, I, I do want, I have a Jurassic on the way, and I, I think I'm probably going to agree with you on that. I think the Jurassic, I probably am going to favor the Jurassic over the XM18. I have a loner on the way, and I bet it will result in me purchasing one. But I'm not going to sell my XM18 to do it, because that was a gift, and it's cool, and it's all tie and all that stuff. But I tend to agree that, looking at it, I've never held a Jurassic, but at first blush, I think I'm going to like the Jurassic more. Is that hinder even comfortable in the hand? Looks full of hot spots. It's very comfortable in the hand. Steve, you had a half track, right? I think I think you said you did somewhere. They're very comfortable in the hand. They're, they don't have hot spots at all. I mean, you can feel that the edge back here just a bit, but no, they're they're really comfortable. I really like them. Do you have and you keep swearing, so it keeps hiding your comments. But I'm just going to respond to them. Uh, Steve, do you have the uh, um, Jurassic, uh, the old one or the new Gen two? I heard you talking about it, but I mean, meaning to ask you about that. Uh, have you tried the MBK XLC? I have not, but Manny, but I do think I'm going to have it. Uh, yes, Steve, according to uh, YouTube, it is. And I don't want to get warnings. Cause I used to get warnings on the live shows all the time when I'd show comments and then I'd get warnings about. It's the only warnings I've ever gotten were from live shows. But yeah, by the way, the super chat is open down there below if you want to, uh, want to uh, check that out. Kicking a few shekels. We always appreciate that. I thought I heard, saw you talking about the half track a while ago, though, Steve. I don't know. I got the impression that you had one or maybe had one for a minute or something. I like the half track, though. It's probably my favorite of the smaller hinders, that or the Eclipse. It's a kind of a toss up. I don't care much for the small XM18. Oh, I do have an XM18 three inch here because I'm doing some work on one for a guy and I have not taken it apart yet. My good buddy Emilio sent this with a sick custom scale. I haven't put on it yet, but I just don't care much for the. 3-inch XM18. I don't know what it is. Fits my hand okay, but 
Like I can get all four fingers on it, but it's so narrow towards the back. It just, I don't, I, it's, even though I have four fingers on it, I feel like I'm only gripping with three. And it still has that rough landing pad when you flip it, which on the three and a half is super easy to avoid, but it seems harder to avoid on the, on the small one. But look at that battle black. Holy crap, that is awesome. Oh, thank you, Ronan. That is very generous of you. I very much appreciate that. But, um, I, yeah, I, I like the overall, like, three-inch size of it, but I'm getting kind of into bigger knives lately. I don't know what it is. I just keep going bigger and bigger and bigger. I mean, God, look at the <laughs> the last three. Yeah, I, in the last two or three weeks, I've gotten a 4Max Scout, the 8010, and, yeah, I already spoiled it. I've got an 8015 coming, a new 8015. It's just... I, I don't know what's going on with me. Let me get the 4Max Scout out. I didn't have it out for here, and I know you guys love it. Open up the old Spidey Pack. Dig that out. Take up half of the damn screen. I'm going to go as long as I feel like tonight, because like I said, my uh, wife isn't around, so we can... I usually try and keep these in an hour, but and I may still do that, but if we're still yakking and there's still people watching, we got 77 on tonight, which is great for an off night when it's a different time. We're just going to keep talking till, till enough of you get bored to leave, or I get bored enough to leave. Wow, that doesn't even fit on the damn screen. Yes. The 4Max Scout. And I do actually carry this. I actually do. It's It's fun. It's just big and stupid and ridiculous, and I love it. Thank you for the donation, Andrew. Yes, and you are right. Clips, uh, clips with Fullard Spear would convince me. Yeah, I would, I'd would. i get one of those in a millisecond. Yeah, the Scout is awesome. They're not expensive. Just go buy you one. You're on your way to a Cold Steel Espada. I had, I had one um, for like uh, two days, and it was actually because someone... It was right when I started the channel. Uh, somebody working in my house left one here. <laughs> and it was all beat to hell, so I didn't put it on video. But I had one around for a couple days before he realized where he left it and came back and got it. I didn't even know how to get a hold of the guy. But he finally realized where he left it and knocked on my door and asked if he left it here. And I was like, yeah. I, w I don't know. That's a bit much. I don't think the spot is a bit much. Yeah, they're 110. And for what you're getting, it's pretty good. The OS 10A is not bad. I mean, it's Cold Steel. They do such a good job with us heat treats and stuff that I'm not really worried about it. Another little Cold Steel that actually, this is coming up this week too. Um, I've actually already recorded the review of this. Is uh, this little uh, Kiridashi folder. Um, I can't remember what this steel is on it. That's, I can't remember what it is. It's a, uh, yeah, the 4034 or whatever. Uh, this actually held up really well. I know it's supposed to be not that great of steel, but Cold Steel does such a good job with the heat treats. And I got to say... Um, this plastic pocket clip is hideous, uh, but it is super comfortable, and I, it's, I think it's tougher than you think. And the, and I did see Lynn Thompson say in a video they'll replace any broken ones, but I mean, I'm pulling on that thing pretty hard. Like, look, it's leaving a mark in my finger, and I don't know. I think it's gonna be all right. We will see, but uh, I really like this little sucker. I really do. See you later, Ohio. Thanks for coming out. The Formax definitely doesn't break any laws. No, no, not at all. So another thing I want to talk about, because I just got the email saying it was okay to announce it. Um, <clears throat> literally, just now, I just saw the little preview come up. Um, I am doing something special on uh, on Monday. On Monday, I don't know what time it's going to come out, but uh, go check out uh, the Late Boy Scouts channel, because I am guest hosting on the Late Boy Scout on Monday. He's going to do this past the mic Monday things. I'm the first one to do it. So I'm going to have a video up on his channel, uh, which is very nice because he has, last I looked, like 212,000 subs. So uh, hopefully I can funnel some of those back into here, and that would be awesome. So uh, it's, it's, it, the, the video is um, uh, top 10 most underrated EDC knives. So um, it's something I, was, I did on here like a year and a half ago, something similar to that, and I was going to do an updated version on here, but then he gave me the chance to do that. So and it's a, I did it face reveal style to do it just a bit different. But um, yeah, he just emailed me and asked. I didn't even believe he knew who I was. And it's it's pretty cool because that's like one of the first channels I started watching when I got into knives. I only watch his knife content, but uh, his knife content I mostly agree with. And um, 
his opinions on stuff. I think we have pretty similar tastes. So yeah, that's, that's really cool. So I hope, uh, hopefully we'll have some more people on here. And yes, the 12,500 sub giveaway is coming. I have half of the stuff sitting next to me and two more things on the way. I already told you guys there's going to be a, uh, um, Farron Forge mini archbishop that's on the way. SEKW, by the way, use the code SDSEK at checkout at southernedgeknifeworks.com and you get 15% off of free shipping. Um, they're sending along a really cool knife. They've sent along um, some other stuff already. Um, they sent along, I think this is pretty cool. I'm going to show you some of it. Screw it. Let's do it. It's a weird night. It's a weird time. Let's do it. So they're sending along another knife that I will wait for that to be revealed till we do the giveaway announcement. But um, they sent along this nice carbon fiber wallet that I don't know anything about, but it looks cool. I'm not gonna bother taking that out. But then they also sent along this beautiful <clears throat> little fixed blade that has their, their logo and stuff on it. If I can remember how the box opens, it's a magnet, you moron. But this really nice little kitcheny knife fixed blade. That is beautiful. It's got their little logo on it. I don't know anything about it yet. I just arrived today. A nice ebony wood. Gorgeous thing. That's going to be in the giveaway. Going to have the uh, Farron Forge Mini Archbishop. I'll bring that out here in just a second. So I remember how this tip goes back on. There we go. <clears throat> Man, that thing is sharp as the dickens. But it comes in a nice little case. Really, really cool. Um... Very generous of them to send that, and also another really cool knife, too, which I'm not even going to say yet. Um, because it's got to leave you something, something to know about, and then let me get out the uh, Fair and Forge. But yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this. I've already started stickering up this vault case, but I did a video about the vault case. Hope you guys saw that. Go check, these are real cool. Um, steel is that kitchen. I feel like I said, I don't know anything about it. They just sent it along for the giveaway. I know nothing yet. I haven't looked at it. It's like a Damascus-y looking thing, but I don't know what it is. I don't know what it's, what it's Damascus is made of, but it is a Damascus blade. So, and yes, one of these will be in the 12,500 sub giveaway. So I have a feeling that probably going to hit 12,500 subs like tomorrow, because I imagine once my late Boy Scout video is up, I'm only like 150 away. Bet I'll probably get that tomorrow. So, because uh, he is a rather large, rather large following. So, I hope so. That would be cool. But I have to wait for all the stuff to come in before I announce it and do the drawing. But Fiji Ten Damascus. That sounds. That sounds. That sounds plausible. I'm not really sure. I think I, he probably said so on an email, but I don't remember. So. <clears throat> Hold on, my wife is texting me. I almost, I almost just typed my wife is texting me. To my wife. She knows that. She knows that. Black AE15 is officially on my wish, wish list. Need to get an Ace Biblio first. Yeah, I need to get an Ace Biblio too. That's one that I really want. I'm hoping there's going to be some special version of it at Blade Show, and maybe I'll pick that one of those up. But it's on my list. A potential. I almost bought one at Blade Show last year, and I didn't. And I told myself, okay, if I go back and there's a tie one there, I'm going to get it. And there wasn't, so I didn't. And um, um, but yeah, the the only thing I don't like about the eighty fifteen was the that it, I, didn't, I never liked that green at all. I just didn't like it. And um, now it's not. Now it's all black, and it's really cool. And the blade isn't, which is great. It's what I want. It's black satin blade. Sign me up. And also it was a bit rough getting out of the pocket, but that's super easy to fix. Now that I know this one is what I'm going to be keeping, I'll sand down the uh, sand down the G10 where the pocket clip lands, and it'll be perfectly fine. See you later, Junk. Before you go, what was the name of that channel you'll be on? Uh, the Late Boy Scout is called. Um, what karambit to buy? I got. I just got a karambit that I did not ask for, and I know nothing about karambits, so. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. I didn't ask. I asked for, from Real Steel, I asked for this, which is very nice, the G-Slip. I've been waiting forever to get one of these. It's been really weird with shipping and stuff. They wound up having to ship it from a U.S. distributor. I think they said this was shipping, and, like, he told me it shipped in, like, early December. It never got here, and then 
you had to get it from one of their US distributors, but this is really nice little slip joint. Not that little of a slip joint, it's a nice, pretty large slip joint, but modern. VG10, really nice G10, wire clip. I'm really gonna like this. This is gonna be a very positive review, I can tell you that. It's super slicey, it's really nice. And then they also sent me this, which is the shade? I don't know. It's a poltergeist design karambit. Like, I don't even know if it's a good karambit or not. I don't know anything about karambits, so. I don't know. This may wind up in a giveaway. I'm not really sure what I'm gonna do with it yet. I have not I have not yet decided, so. I know what they're meant for, for Filipino martial arts and all that stuff. And yeah, I've looked up some of the little like uh, tutorial videos and things, and I don't know, I didn't ask for it, but it may just wind up going in a giveaway and say, thank you, Real Steel, because I don't know. It's not really the style of stuff I usually do on this channel. And like CRKT offered to send me the Provoke, and I said, nah, no thanks. And just not my thing, but um, yeah. Yeah, the shade, I believe it's called. They have the box over here. Let me look. Um, G slip. Yeah, the shade. You can tell it's a poltergeist design because it's got not only the poltergeist logo, but also, you know, it's got those those two little chain ring bolts that hold it together that they always do. But not my thing. But we will see. Let's move some knives around. The exec back out there. Put the cold steel away for a minute. Like I said, review that tomorrow night. Oh, you guys are going to be happy. Everybody's been bugging me to get a Tucson. I did get two Tucsons, and then you guys all just said you hated the ones that I chose. And that that made me sad, so I didn't review them. I gave one to a friend and sold another one. So now I did get another one that I know that is one that I is not highly reviewed, but I know a lot of you guys talk about I, I pay attention to the Tucson hashtags, and a lot of you guys have this one. So I did get a TS-182. This is the 14C28N one. They're 90 bucks at whitemountainknives.com. Use the code SDWMK at checkout and get 10% off. Um, they are available there. I think I think they might be sold out at the moment, but this is one that he usually keeps in stock. Uh, carbon fiber, 14C28N. I love 14C28N. I love carbon fiber. It's on bearings. That's nice. I, this pocket clip looks really nice. Um, there are a few things I really don't like about it, and uh, a lot of things I do, so we will see. You will have a, uh, a video of that coming out fairly soon. Uh, but... Yeah, there's just a few things. The, the edges on it, are, the carbon edges are very abrupt. And I haven't torn it apart yet, but it creaks. I don't like that noise at all. It's smooth, but it just creaks. I, I typed, I'm wife, to my wife. That's what you get for talking and typing at the same time. I actually literally just, instead of saying I'm live, I texted her, I'm wife. <sighs> Where is Protex Strider, dude? Uh, not in this state. They're not legal. I don't do a whole lot of uh, automatics because of that. You're going to get the off-grid Scorpion. I don't know what that is, so I did not. See Lavender Pants, that's why I don't talk about two sons because they come out with so many every time i come on and say i'm reviewing this two son everybody says you should have gotten this one and it's very annoying uh new york and everybody tells me oh go and buy them on ebay i'm not i don't do ebay i don't want to deal with all that so that's why i don't do many two sons i'm gonna do a couple token ones to make everybody happy but i'm sure they're very nice but um but they're I don't like this, the, you have to buy, I mean, White, White Mountain Knives has them, but they don't get a whole lot in, they sell out fast, and I don't like dealing with eBay and all that crap, so that's why I don't review them. And then they come out with so many, that, and they have so many fans that are so crazy, and then um, you you get one, and then everybody's like, no, you should have gotten this one, because it just came out two days ago. I'm like, I don't know. I just picked the TS-182, it's a fairly high number, but that's the one I picked. Um, Rusty Swain says, move to Indiana. You can wear a machete in your boot here. Well, how big are your boots? And also, then I'd be in Indiana. Um, sold my 80 ton. You made me very sad lately watching your channel. Yeah, I was very sad when I sold mine, so. 
I didn't sell mine because I disliked it. I sold it because they switched to the flat grind, which I think the hollow grind was, is better. But being a reviewer, you want to have the current one. And the flat grind to hollow grind transition was enough that I felt I should replace it. So I sold the hollow grind one fully intending to immediately buy the flat grind one. And then I just didn't. But I did now. Oh, somebody asked about the discounts. All the codes are down below, but we have two now. Uh, we have southernedgeknifeworks.com. Use SD, SEK at checkout, get 15% off plus free shipping. And then White Mountain Knives is uh, SDWMK at checkout, and you get 10% off. So they're, they're all down below in the description, down, down this way. Uh, Lavender Pants, I think the TS-22 looks awesome. I haven't seen that one. Yeah, it is, it is pretty cool looking. It is very cool. Like I said, the carbon fiber is, uh, it's beautifully, beautiful carbon fiber, but the milling on the carbon is not horribly impressive. And uh, the action is, I think, will definitely, I bet when I tear this apart, it's filthy inside. I haven't, I haven't checked, but I get that impression that it is very dirty. The pocket clip's really nice. Titanium backspacer, it's steel liner lock, but, or is it steel? Let me look. That looks kind of titanium-y. Grab my a magnet. No, that's steel. It had kind of a titanium shade to it there for a second. But that is not, and that is not, ow, my finger hurts. I really cut myself good. I'm not going to show it to you because it'd be gross, but it is a uh, nicht gut. Normally, like, knife cuts don't hurt after a few, after a couple hours, but man, this one still really hurts. It's very achy. Probably should have gotten stitches, but oh well. I have a mutant healing factor, so I don't usually bother with stitches because by the time I get to the hospital, it's already mostly healed up. So, could you pick up the eighty ten, please, for nostalgic purposes? You just want me to, you just want me to make you sad. You want me to play sad music? You want me to sing Danny Boy? I'm not gonna do that. But uh, yeah, I I'm so glad I have one of these back. Really, really like it. Um, what got you? Oh, that, that cold steel, but it was not the cold steel's fault. It was definitely absolutely my fault. I was cutting something and you guys will see when I do the next face reveal video, I was sticking some license plates on my wall and I used that, um, the 3M double-sided thick tape that you used to like glue trim pieces on, to stick trim pieces on cars. It's the only stuff that sticks to that wall. It takes the paint with it when you come off, but the paint sucks on that. It's a chimney, so the paint sucks on it anyway. And uh, I was cutting a piece of that like an idiot and holding it like you know, like this, and I just, like, kind of, like, I don't remember how I was, like, something like that, and I just went, and got it deep. Set the G-slip next to the fair and forge. Gosh, what am I here, monkeys? Dance for me! No, that's no problem. I can do that. Yeah, it's really hard to do when that finger's not working. Yeah, they're, that's a pretty long knife. I don't know which fair and forge you met, but because I guess there are two up here, but I'm going to guess it was that one. I'll put the void away. No, I don't want to, but we're going to put some other stuff out here. What else do I have coming up this week? Um, I did do... I already did the shredder. I do have my very own shredder now. I'm happy to have that around. Um, oh, what else is new that I could put out? Hmm. Huh. Oh, let's look in the fancy case. We'll get something out of there. I don't show the Atom much with these newer scales that I have. They're not new, new, but newer scales. We'll get that out. There we go. I like these Techwood scales. Band-Aid brand versus Next Care Waterproof. Battle to the death. I do whatever, whatever I'm... I can find. Hey, Metal Complex, how's it going, man? Metal Army Rise. If he rises much more, I'm going to have to strike him down as the Lord of the Sith rules demand. The Sith law demands that I must strike him down. When the apprentice becomes too powerful, he must be destroyed. It's just how it is. He understands. We've already talked about it. It's just how it is. There's nothing I can do about it. It's, it's the law. Um, 
really like my Atom much better than the Neutron. Me too, Randy. I don't, I was going to get another Neutron and I don't really feel like I need to. I like the Atom a lot more and I have a lot of really nice three inch knives. So don't really feel the need to get it. All right, Knife Lover, you're back. You said you were leaving. Um, do you have any Chris Reeve knives, Gregory Burke asked? I do not currently. I had a, um, a, a Sebenza 21, and my number one thing I want to buy at Blade Show is I'm beelining straight for the Chris Reeve knives booth and getting a, a Sebenza 31, assuming they have any. I assume they will at Blade Show, but I really want a Sebenza 31. Um... MC and Slicey, my two favorite YouTube personalities. Yeah, and we actually get along. Although, like I said, I'm going to have to destroy him one day. But we do get along. He's a nice guy. Yeah, I, didn't, I can't see all the comments, man. What's the difference about the 31? Um, the pocket clip is moved so it doesn't sit on the lock bar. And, um, oh, there was something else in the in the bushings. It's got the, the different style bushings than the than the last one, than the 21. And the, oh, and the uh, inlays are completely different. Let's see, you missed the XM18 and Jurassic discussion. You did. I ordered a 31 Direct. I don't know how long I'll be waiting for the phone call, though. Swoop says, yeah, I, I think they're, I estimated like, um, or I heard that the estimate was like June, July. So I'm hoping that means they're going to have some at Blade Show. Fingers crossed, but. So I see how you like in the half-track warning. It is, it is delicious. It is gorgeous and amazing. I'm, I'm loving it a lot. Unfortunately, I got a whole lot of stuff in the last few days, so I have not been able to carry it. Seems like every, yes, literally every single day this week, I got at least one knife in. So it's been a bit cray cray around here, as as my daughter would say. Did I use that right? I think I did. I'm sure my, I can hear my daughter rolling her eyes from the other side of the house. She just senses it when I say things like that. Uh, what are you looking forward to seeing at Blade Show? Uh, I haven't actually heard a whole lot of rumors about much. Um, uh, I heard one that I'm definitely not allowed to talk about that will be cool, but maybe very polarizing. And then um, I really want a Sebenza 31. That's what I want to buy. So um, I haven't really heard that many that many rumors of, of stuff. So <clears throat> and if I don't have one by then, if, if they're not out by then, I want to... Spider Co. PM2 Tanto, but I think they'll be out by then. I think I already have one by then, but we will see. I'm sure he'll rant and rave for at least 20. Yeah, I didn't watch your video about the X-18 versus the Jurassic because Jurassic? Uh, I'm Sean Connery all of a sudden. Um, because you are sending me the Jurassic and I don't want to be unduly influenced by it. So I'm not watching it. I imagine I'm going to like the Jurassic more than the XM18 because I'm not the hugest XM18 fan in the world. I love mine, um, but I'm not like the, I don't feel a need to have more than one. So the Jurassic, I really want to check out though. It's a very good chance I'm probably going to buy one. I may even buy that one and just die the scales, but we will see if Winnie will allow me. Or if I have the funds at that moment. Knife overload, yeah. I'm, I'm so backed up on reviews now. I actually turned down somebody uh, yesterday. Really, really good company. And they, they offered to send me a couple things. And I said, yes, please, but not now, like in a month. Um, MCSD sounds like a weird cover band. <laughs> yeah. You know, Metal Complex was a cool name. I do like that as a name. It's very good, but I'm more jealous of the MC as a as an abbreviator. But I don't get SD. Nobody calls me that. They call me Dice a lot, but I get that. But this is Hinderer dialogue. Yeah, we, you, you and I, MC, we could go on about about Hinderers for hours and hours and hours. I still think it's hilarious. I know I mentioned it all the time, but literally less than two years ago, I said. I don't like any of Rick Hinder's designs. Nothing he that makes interest me, remotely interests me. And now I have three real ones. I've had five total. I've got a bunch of his ZT Kershaw stuff. I'm. I was wrong. I was a fool. ST Motorcycle Club. Hank Dickery Talk is a nice dice poem. Yeah. Why did it block that show? Yeah. I think people call me Dice because it's slicey dicey and I'm a comedian, so some somebody thought that was witty. Um 
and it's stuck around Blade Show. So you can purchase four dozen hinders, right? At Mineral Complex, yeah. You two and your hinders. Yeah, we do have a problem. We're going to start a support group, I think. I think I have more than him now. How many do you have, MC? You've only got two now, don't you? I think I, think I have more than you now. I have three. You've owned 26, but how many do you actually have? I've owned five, but I have three. Yeah, you just have two, so I'm ahead. You may be catching me in subs, but I am I'm staying ahead of you and hinderers. MC, like I said, if they did a the Eclipse 3 put on a full spear, I'd be all over it. Yeah, I'd be I'd be definitely getting that. Absolutely. And pulling away in hinderer ownership. That's a really bad thing to be pulling away in. So I'm going to have to probably sell one of them before I go to Blade Show. Probably probably the Eclipse. I'll probably let go before. Especially if a new one comes out. Um, because I, I need Blade Show money. So that I might. I might sell this before Blade Show. But I, I don't want to. I like having three hinderers. I don't know why. It just seems like a good proper amount of them. But um, they are expensive to keep around. See you later, MC. Thanks for dropping by. Appreciate it. Uh, yeah, it's a very expensive problem, but it's uh, it's it's better than it's better than drugs. Looking forward to my 0562 tie, the poor man's XM18. You know, in a lot of ways, I like the 562 tie better than the XM18. Don't don't feel that way at all. I there's uh, many things I like about the. 0562 tie much better than the X19. It's more comfortable in the hand. The action's better. It's well, not the action's not better, but you don't have that nasty jimpy part. Where's that three inch? Yeah, you don't have the nasty jimpy part for your finger to hit when you flick it. I I would not call it the poor man's X18. It's based on the XM18 shape, but the 0562 tie is freaking fantastic. It sounds better. It's really good. Um yeah, I was satisfied with my 0562 tie for a very long time. Um, I had the 3-inch. I think I've told the story before. I had This is not my 3-inch. This is uh, one that I'm working on for somebody. I had the 3-inch. Didn't really like it that much. Um, couldn't. I liked it, but I couldn't put my finger on it. It wasn't quite satisfied. I feel, decided I wanted a bigger one. Sold it. Was going to buy the uh, uh, an XM18 3 and a half, and then somebody suggested I try the 0562 tie instead for significantly less money so I, I did that and the 0562 tie kept me very happy for a long time um and then uh I finally popped on what was the next one I got um oh a half track I had the full tie half track and then I had the eclipse and then I have the uh now I have full size x 18 that somebody gave me but um but ZT makes a hinder style knife. They make a hinder designed knife. It has his name on it. Do either of you begin pulling back at a 750 dollars $900 hinder, Gregory says. Well, I will tell you, I had a $650 half track and um, I sold it because I didn't really like to carry it because it was 650 bucks and it was a Spanto, which I didn't love the blade anyway. And then I sold it and got a cheaper half track. So yes, I do pull back. Um, absolutely. I'm a flipper guy, so I'm happy. Oh, there are a lot of flippers out here. There haven't been as many flippers. I've been more on a thumb stud kick, but I do have quite a few flippers out here today. So, um, any views on the hinder slippy? Uh, I don't like the double sided G10 hinderers at all. Um, I had the, I didn't have the the slippy, but I had the slim, uh, the skinny, and um, with the liner lock, and didn't care for it. You can go back and watch that review. I I was not not too. Uh, not too nice about it. <laughs> so I didn't really care for it. Um, oh, yeah, I did see somebody po pointed it out. I, I said something about that. You wouldn't be able to get them anymore. I couldn't believe it because it's because I assumed they were gone. There is an aspirated titanium void left on Blade HQ. So got to go get one of those. I brought up the 0393. The 0393 is very nice too. I really liked it. I don't. I did not at all like the original color scheme a bit. I didn't like that blue half-coated blade. I thought that was hideous. And then they came out with a much better looking one, the gray one, but it had S35VN instead of 20CV for some reason. I had one of those. I had one of those for quite a while. I sold that. And now the new one is glow-in-the-dark carbon, which at least when it's not glowing, it looks good. But I just don't like glow-in-the-dark stuff. I just think it's dumb. I don't know. 
Do you guys like glow in the dark? I just think it's stupid. Uh, what's that green thing in the middle? Uh, well, it's it's actually bronze. It does look kind of green on camera though. But it, this is a um, Mass Drop Laconico Keen or Drop Laconico Keen. Now I guess. Um, yes, gimmicky. I just don't because it's in your pocket all the time, so it's not charged up. So it's not like if it falls out of your pocket, you're gonna be able to easily find it because it's glowing. Because it's not gonna be glowing because it's been in your pocket the whole time. I'm not offended by it when they do glow in the dark that doesn't look like glow in the dark when it's hidden in the shred carbon, which is how most people do it. But uh, as long as you're not charging extra for it, it's fine. And I don't think ZT did. I think the L393 stayed exactly the same price with the glow in the dark shred as it was that old hideous one. But correct me if I'm wrong, but. Is it me or does Mass Drop look cheap on the blade? Well, it doesn't say that anymore. This is an older one now. It just says drop, but I don't know. I don't, it doesn't bother me, but it still has the Laconico on the back of it. Um, I asked for the donation, Ronan, but I want natural my car skills. My I don't know what that was about. I must have missed something. Yeah, the uh, Super Chat's open when it kicks in a few chuckles. And yeah, and, uh, or check out the Patreon too, because like we're gonna have a giveaway tomorrow. So uh, I'm gonna be giving away for Patreon people only. I'm not gonna do it often. It's just when I'm trying to hit goals, and I was trying to hit 50, and I did now. So as this show was going on, I did. So I'll be giving away this. Uh, I'll be notifying the the person who won. This is the uh, Kershaw Knockout in M390. I am going to randomize it, but I'm not gonna post a video on Patreon because um, they don't like that. I found out. So I'll just notify you privately that you won. And the best thing is, you know, the, the Patreon, I think the biggest benefit is you get 24-hour early access to the sales because usually my sales only last about an hour and everything's gone. So you get 24-hour early access to know what I'm going to be selling and you can buy it before everybody else does. And honestly, the last time I think a third of the stuff went on Patreon before it even got out. So, um, and there are going to be a lot of sales coming up because I'm already, I'm already planning on, um, I'm already planning for a Blade Show money. So I already know what I'm going to sell. A few of them anyway. I just don't know when yet. So I'm intentionally not selling stuff right now because if I do, I'll spend the money on something else. <laughs> so I'm keeping them around and I will liquidate them as I have to when I get closer. The M390 knockout is the sharpest knife for box. It is wicked sharp, definitely. Cliff Spear says, just broke my T6 bit trying to center my 940. Time for a new set of bits. Any recommendations? Weeha. Always get weehaws. Especially in the, um, pull out one of mine, just as a demonstration. This is my favorite one that I use the most because it's in this nice little metal tin and I don't lose anything. And my driver's on here. Here it is. Uh, I use the, I like to use these uh, iFixit drivers. I think they're really nice. Um, and it fits in the slot. But get, make sure to get the Weeha bits that look like this, the hardened steel ones. Don't The black ones are fine, the little T-handles and stuff, but get get these. These are the micro ones. They also come in, you know, quarter inch and all that stuff. But And get an iFixit driver. They're amazing. They're so nice. And my, my T8 is not in there. I'm going to put it back in before I lose it. Gotta keep track of your tools, everybody. Just like your mama told you. There's also this set I use a fair bit, but this is kind of almost um, spare bits. <laughs> but uh, this set's pretty good, too. I can't remember what any of them cost. <clears throat> Comes with a pretty decent driver. <clears throat> Not as nice as the uh, iFixit, but still pretty decent. A little extension and stuff that us knife people are never going to use. But, uh, yeah. And then I have a set of quarter-inch bits somewhere around here, too, that I use with a bigger, just a crappy Lowe's driver or something I got. I was like, what you sipping on? Just a Jenny. Yes, I do need another sip, but another just a Jenny. I had to buy a bunch because I was doing a fish fry tonight, night and it's so good for beer batter and it's cheap and I'm still knocking them down. You still have this VV Odium prototype? I do not. It's basically the same size and dimensions as this, but um, the blade's a bit different. It's rounded scales. I thought it was the same thing. I thought they were calling the mini Archbishop and VV was going to call it the Odium, but that's not what happened, so... Um, how many sets of bits do I own? A lot, because we had, um, used to sponsor, officially sponsor Brews and Blades. I used to do giveaways every week, and that's, they didn't stop sponsoring, and I just kind of stopped doing the giveaways, which I probably should start doing that again. Um, but, uh, I should definitely start doing that again. But, but they send me all kinds of stuff. I just get boxes, I just get packages from Weha every now and then. 
So that's why most of my giveaways have some kind of Weeha something in them because Weeha gives me a lot of stuff. I have no idea how many sets of bits, <laughs> how many how many sets of Weeha bits I have. At least four that I kept, and then I've given away probably thirty of them over the years. A friend of mine is super in nice. He says the Spider Go Delica is a good one. Has anyone ever heard of it? Yes, Rusty Swing. Everyone's heard of the Delica. Absolutely. Um, I will say, uh, don't. I would say you can do better. Yeah, I may have typed the link in wrong. I have to type it on my phone for S S E K W. Let me see. I probably typed it. I probably just typed it wrong. And link in new tab. Yeah, I just typed it wrong. I'll fix it when the show's over. I can't fix it now. I'd have to stop it. Yes, I put a an S. It says S J instead of Edge. Just a typo. Yeah, I think I think the Delica's overpriced now. You can do a lot more. Uh, can you show the spine tip on the G slip? Someone's really into the G slip. Yeah, it's 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 pretty decent. It's not super thick and bulky or beefy, but we don't want to pry on too much with it, but it's not like the daintiest thing in the world either. Very slicey. Can't wait to get time to do the full review on this. I was really pumped to get it. You guys know I love these really modern traditionals or modern slip joints. Um, but uh, it took forever to get here. It took like three months before I got it. It's ridiculous. Um, and I like real steels too, so... Don't like the way the fullers kind of T-clip the spine blade great nice though. I don't know, I think it looks kind of cool. I think it looks neat looking down on it too. It's got a kind of a little hourglass thing to it. Doesn't bother me. And it's nice to have a full fuller that you can grab any place on the knife because this is a pretty strong, pretty strong back spring. So it's good to be able to grab it farther up and get a bit more leverage. If it was only like back here, it's, it's pretty hard to open if you just grab it back here. So it's really nice to have all that leverage. Uh, can you please show off that fiery uh, TRM? Yeah, this is the these are the Techwood scales. Um, I think they're on the site. I know they were. I don't know if they sold through them quick, but it's kind of like diamond wood. Uh, they're really nice. They they don't do justice looking at them just like this. You can see a little bit of the blue, but then when you look at like on the spine, all that multi layer, they're so pretty. Uh, I'm kind of been stuck on these scales for the last like uh, four or five weeks. <laughs> I've left just these scales on. I really love them. They're so pretty. And these are the uh, the fluted ones, too. The, like, contoured fluted ones. They're very nice. Don't add any weight. Still a very light, skinny knife. I'm interested in what the atomic with the titanium scales is going to be like. And I'm really interested in, uh, what do they call it? I can't remember the name of it. The uh, the axis, well, you know, they can't call it an axis lock. Their, their version of the axis lock one that they've been showing pictures of. That's going to be cool. A TRM with a slicey TRM bla 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 blade and... And an axis lock action on it. Oh, can't take, shut up and take my money. What's a knife like that cost? Uh, this, um, I assume that's the last one I showed. Um, or are you asking somebody else? This is like about 220 and um, you got to get on a waiting list and stuff. They're, they're, they're a bit, a bit difficult to get. If you thought the price of a Delica though was okay at 70 some bucks, you can, you can just do a lot better for less, for less money, even amongst, even in Spyderco's own catalog, I think you can do better for less money. I'd sp I personally, if, if you really want a Spyderco and you really want a lightweight one, uh, you know, spend the extra, what is it now, 15 bucks and get a uh, get a uh, Chaparral lightweight. A much better knife. The recent TRM Adam Drops blade has a milky blade, more typical stone wash. Oh, I didn't see that. Or Sage 5, yeah, that's a lot. That's quite a bit more, though. I was saying in that 80-ish dollar price range. But the Sage 5 is excellent. Or a Sage 5 lightweight, that'd be fine, too. I don't care for it much, but... I, I care for it, it's fine. It's, it's nothing wrong with it. It's just, I'd rather have the regular one. So got 94 people watching, 68 minutes in. Sweet ass. Danny T says, so you like the mini bug out? I do. And it, you know, one thing that I was, I was remiss in the review, which I had in my notes and I didn't even mention it in the review. And then somebody asked down below, this is an excellent little fifth pocket knife. Fits perfectly in my fifth pockets on all the jeans that I could try. And it's just, it disappears. It's so light. 
The only danger of carrying it in a fifth pocket is that it's going through the wash. Because I, I always forget my fifth pocket knife is there. Because I don't always carry a fifth pocket knife. So um, I do still hate the white scales. And I hate the orange on the other one. But uh, other than that, it is a great little knife. I mean, it's just a bug out, but it's smaller. Ergonomics are okay on it for my hands. I like it. I keep cutting the fat in your hand with the, the mini. Oh, when you're closing it? Yeah, I never have yet. I guess I'm really sensitive about that. So... <laughs> Because I have hit a couple knives that would bite me like that. Yeah, you must really be getting into it. Hex, yeah, I'm not close to it. The valet comes close. The valet didn't cut me, but I did. I did feel it. Another small bench made, so I am very careful about that, though. You know, it's bouncing off, but yeah, you do got to be careful now. And quite a few knives that will do that. The Hogue Deca, um, the clip, or the uh, drop point one, will definitely get you if you're not paying attention. You keep missing Ronan trying to give you stuff. I'm not seeing Ronan. I'm sorry. Ronan, it's slicey. What's the address of the channel? I'll send you a black micro brand new inbox. You can review, keep, or give. Oh, great, Ronan. Um, email me. I'll give it to you. I, I shut down the um, PO box. I'm trying to go back through all the old videos and delete that. Um, it just wasn't worth the money, but absolutely. I'd be, that'd be, that'd be fantastic, Ronan. I'm so sorry I missed it. I thought you were just talking about your Micarta Biblio. That would be amazing. Um, email me at slicydicey75 at gmail.com. There is a link, a link down there. So uh, I will definitely take that off your hands. I really want to review one of those, and people keep asking me to do it. So um, that would be great. Be very good content for the channel. And I'll use it for something charitable at some point. Unless I love it, and then I'll give away something else charitable that's equal, equal value. Um, what's your thoughts on the CF Elite Presidios? Uh, I will find out. Uh, they're not available. Uh, well, the big one is available now, but I want to get the mini. So, um, I'm getting both. Um, I'm going to have somebody pick up both of them for me on, they are available on a week from, a week from this Monday. So as soon as they're available at the Benchmade store, uh, old Zachy boy is going to go grab them for me. And then, um, I'm going to be writing about them in Knives Illustrated magazine. So for the military issue. And by the way, if you guys don't if you guys don't subscribe to Knives Illustrated, if you like me and you like listening to my my words, I just I just turned in all my articles for the March twenty fourth issue of Knives Illustrated. I got three articles in that. Um, I'm going to be doing some on their website. I have a meeting about that this weekend, and we're going to figure out some stuff on their website. I'm going to I'm going to have some pitches. I don't know exactly what's going to happen, but um, they're listening to me. They're letting me make some changes, and uh, I really like it. And I've, it's been very rewarding so far. I worked a 16-hour day on Tuesday writing stuff for them and phone calls and meetings. And you know what? Um, did not hate it one bit. I really enjoyed it. Uh, they seem to really respect my opinion on things. Um, they want things to change over there. They want to change the flavor of the magazine a little bit, modernize it a little bit. They want to get the online presence going, and um, they're really, they are honestly really listening to me. And so thus far, it's been a fantastic relationship. I, I could not be happier with them. And the pay doesn't suck. It's not amazing, but um, I'm just getting started. It's going to be more and more as it goes on, but it does not suck. It's very, very good. Gregory Burke says, you're a writer now. I've been a writer for 20 years. That's, that's, that's what I do. Um, that's my main job, but uh, reviewing products. But, you know, lately... My own website, I'm, the, I'm a one-man show, so I wind up doing more bill collecting than actually writing. It's really nice just to write, just to sit down and write. And all I got to do is worry about my words, maybe some photos. It's It's been fantastic. And I I stuck in a few little jokes in there. I, I pushed the boundaries a bit because the editor's my friend, and um, she loved it. They didn't change one of my articles. They only changed like two commas of the whole thing. I couldn't even see where they changed anything in it. And then another one, um, they had me uh, take some more pictures and add a little paragraph to it. And then another one they didn't change a bit. That was an interview with um, with Marianne from TRM. And then where's my TRM? But I had oh yeah, there's oh, yeah, yeah, right there, Marianne from TRM. Uh, of course, they didn't change any of that because it's an interview. Uh, but it was great. It was really good. And the, the head of the whole media company emailed me and wants to talk about their online presence. So yeah, we're gonna be going to be not partnered up. It's going to be two separate jobs. Slicey Dicey is not going to change, not going to change a bit. Um, 
and they're fine with that. That was always the condition was that my YouTube channel will never change a bit. Um, and then, but I'll do what I do on your thing. So it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. And hopefully it's going to turn into an actual real proper job job. That would be amazing. May have simply edited to improve the flow. No, they didn't edit a word, dude. I compared them. They didn't change anything. <laughs> it's, I've been doing this for 20 years, so, um, I kind of know what I'm doing. And, um, I didn't expect a lot of changes. I thought they'd just take some of the jokes out, uh, but they didn't. They left them in. Who is this with, again, wasn't listening again. I don't know. Oh, uh, Knives Illustrated and KnivesIllustrated.com. So KnivesIllustrated.com is going to change a lot. That's going to be my the main thing I'm going to be doing. I'll be writing articles in the magazines, but I think the, my most of my time with them is going to be uh, with the website. So um, I'm excited about it. The layout of it's great. We don't need to change anything there. Just, you know, more content, stuff like that. I have some ideas. There'll be some videos over there probably. But um, so do you EDC that A10 or what? I didn't mind it when I had it. No, I, care. I love carrying it. I, the AD10 is super easy to carry. It's not bad at all. Well, not super easy. It's pretty heavy. But and, but I carry it. It carries fine. I really like it. I wouldn't carry it in the summer when I have lighter weight stuff. But um. Yeah. If we all had talons like wild chicken, we wouldn't need knives. Yeah, but we'd need a lot more. So, uh, yeah, Ronan, pop over and email me about that. I'm really sorry I wasn't paying attention when you were talking. I'm, a, I'm an idiot. That's a very generous offer, and I, I very much appreciate that. Um, Abraham uh, Ayala says, what's the best first knife? Um... I would say something something backlock. Um, a lot of the spider codes are horribly overpriced now. So I usually recommend those, but um used to. Um and actually this isn't a backlock, but it's in the spider code family. Bird Raven 2 is a darn good first knife. Um my first knife was a spider, my first real knife that I bought for myself that I liked um was uh the um spider code tenacious. And I wish I'd gotten a Raven too. I actually did a video about it. Oh, my wife's watching. She's texting me, telling me. So everybody say hi. So it's just, she can't find the chat, but say hi anyway. Uh, what did you use the AD10 for? I just use it like a regular old EDC knife. I don't, I don't really use it any different or weird than I do anything else. Slicey wifey. Yes, she's over there. And she is coming to Blade Show with me. So I'll be the, I'll be the, the skinny guy walking around with a very, very beautiful woman. So, um, that's how you can, you can spot me. The skinny guy probably wearing sunglasses indoors with a pretty lady. Uh, what does that emoji mean? Yeah, I don't know. He said, yeah, I enjoyed it too. And then you had you know, a cry face next to it. It's got the Benchmade APB665. I don't know what that one is. That doesn't ring a bell. It's be your first Blade show after eight years of collecting. Well, congratulations, William. You're going to have a lot of fun. This will be my second. And man, first year was that first day was uh, overwhelming for sure. And I, and I do trade shows all the time. And that was still, uh, that was a lot. That was a lot to take in. But by second day, I was, I got the hang of it. I'm not going to be recording anything in the show, though. I learned that. I figured that out within two hours walking in the place. I love the guys who do the booth videos. God bless them. Eugene Kwan does an amazing job with them. Uh, but I'm, nope, I'm not. I don't have time to do that. I don't have time to do that. Uh, which issues do your articles appear, Brian? Uh, is uh, Knives Illustrated the, March 24th is when it hits the press. I know that because that's the day I get paid. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it'll be on, it'll be on, on your uh, newsstands on March 24th. And I, you'll be able to download it digitally also. They always have digital copies you can you can buy online. Well, what size blade are you going for? And what were you referring to as being too big? I think you're talking to somebody else. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, uh, I'm into thicker knives. Do you have any recommendations? Well, the 8010, obviously, because I just I had one, sold it, and bought one back. Uh, the 8015. A lot of cold steels. I think if you're going to get something big, heavy, and ridiculous, it's it's cold steel is a pretty good shout. Um, 
And, or, you know, if you've spent a lot of money, Medford's, of course. Medford makes some of the best thicker bladed knives out there. And Indiana has the best no knife laws. Yes, but again, it's Indiana. I'm just giving you crap, Rusty Swing. I'm just not a big... Haven't been to Indiana much, but every time I've been there, it wasn't, not, it wasn't a lot of fun. Uh, Randy, if just one cold steel. Oh, if, if I could have just one cold steel? I don't, I don't know. Um, probably the... Right now, off the top of my head, the 8010 or the American Law Man, or one of those two. I always have to sing the song when I do it. Oh, Medford had that new one at Shot Show. They actually look kind of thin and slice. Yeah, they do some thinner ones now. They do. He definitely does some thinner ones now. Good old Greg. Uh, Will and Penny says no ska in the collection. No, I sold it. I I had one and I. Did I auction that one off for charity or just sell it? I think I auctioned it. I auctioned it off for charity, I think. It became a running joke here every time I showed it. People were making bids on it. And I wanted to do something nice for a charity that helped my mom out. So I auctioned it off live on here and gave the money to the Alzheimer's Association. So um, I, it was a joke that turned into me selling it. And I miss it, but not a ton, honestly. I've got a lot of light knives, you know, and that kind of... It is a beautiful, amazing knife. And I, if you can get one, get one. But... Um, it's not something I'm going to put myself on the waiting list again for. If I get the opportunity to get one for, um, in trade or whatever, but, uh, yeah, $200 for the atom. Don't start that. That one's not going away. Somebody on Instagram messaged me and said, I'll pay, I'll pay a uh, retail for your atom plus like, Plus, like the they wanted one set. Oh, they wanted the red. I have the red carbon scales too. The red carbon scales and whatever, and I'll, I'll pay you retail for it. And I was like, no, it's not for sale. And he goes, but you can just go get another one. You can just call up and get. No, I can't. I get on the same waiting list that all you guys get on for TRMs, and I pay for them. They might throw in some free scales every now and then or something, but I get on the same waiting list as you guys, and I pay the same thing. So, like, I just thought I could just call up TRM and just magically get another atom. Nope. So, is my wifey still on here? She's texting me again. Oh, I got I got emojis. She's stalking. She's stalking all of us. She said I don't know if she ever, she didn't find the chat yet apparently. But uh, hey, Slicey, have you tried any Cold Steel Spartans? I have not tried that one. If you ever get the blue scales for the Adam, let me know. I I want the, right now a cauldron. They just put out last night the um uh blue g or purple g10 i'm sorry the purple g10 i really want those um but i don't if i get paid in the next couple of days i might have to pop on those purple ones i love purple it's my favorite he misses b enjoying the keychain oh yeah if you're still if you're still watching that's this is the guy randy f's the guy who made that that keychain that keychain i know she still has it on her keys i've i see it uh how much for your red adam sell them to us sell us your children yeah they just people just do that. It's so it's so annoying. Grace, it's the new one. What's the new one? The new one? What? Oh, you guys are talking about something else. I'm sorry. I'm interrupting your. I feel like I'm interrupting your conversation. It's like you guys are having a conversation in my living room. And then I feel like I'm interrupting you. We're almost up to an hour and a half. I think that's probably where we're gonna call it. An hour and a half's a long time for people to sit back and listen back to this. But, yeah, Ronan, I'm glad you're still on, and I do apologize for not noticing your very generous offer earlier. So please email me, slicydice75 at gmail.com, and I'll give you my regular address. I don't have the, the P.O. box anymore. It wasn't worth keeping, so I'm just going to tell people to email me, and if I know you're not a weirdo, then I'll give you my, uh, my home address, and you, you don't seem like a weirdo. Joe Rogan goes for two hours and 30 in podcasts. Yeah, but this isn't podcast. This is just uh, people sitting in front of it. I mean, a lot of people do just listen to it, which is fine, but... I show things, so it's kind of weird. It's more visual than that. Have a good evening. See you next week. See you, Randy. Nice to have you around. I wonder if my wife noticed what I called this one. <laughs> the Bruising Blades Wife is Away edition. Hey, you know, at least she knows that I'm not doing anything weird. I'm just sitting here talking about knives with a bunch of dudes, and she can watch. See you later, Keith. Thank you very much. I wish I could still private message people on this thing. It's so stupid that they they got rid of it. 
it used to have a messenger function on here, and you can't. Uh, no, I can't do anything. I can do that. I can go to the channel. I want to make sure I get a hold of Ronan, because I feel very bad, because he offered very nicely to give me something very nice, and then I totally missed it, because there was a hundred of you on here, and I didn't see it. See you next time, Bionic. Thanks for coming out. Have you done any writ dye or any other kind of customization things? I thought about getting into it. It's a nice style. It says, I have writ dye right back here behind me. I just bought like three colors and I am going to be doing it. I'm just trying to figure out which. Probably, first of all, would be the Eclipse. And then once, once this has been used for enough battles to the death, I'm getting rid of that white as soon as I possibly can. But I want to keep it stock for as long as I can. But um, yeah, I've got purple, which I don't think is going to work well with the green. I've got midnight blue, which midnight blue might overcover, over, overcover, overcome the green, but it's probably just gonna be black. So I'm gonna try to do a midnight blue and see how it comes out. And if it doesn't come out good, then always got black. So I can do that. Yes, that's what she said. Um, New Medford is the on belay. Yeah. Email noiser. Thank you, Ronan. Appreciate it. Uh, and I'm sorry again. Um, sitting around a bunch of dudes talking about knives. Nothing weird here. Nope, nope, nope. She's used to it. I want to remind my phone. She knows I'm on Instagram Messenger talking about knives. So, um, yeah, I know there are a lot of upstate New Yorkers that follow the channel. So, um, I'm going to try to do a little get together. So if you are anywhere near the Northeast, we are going to, I've already talked to the comedy club about it. So, um, I don't know when it's going to be probably um right after probably pretty shortly after blade show um i'm with jay moore the weekend after blade show and then maybe like the following week or no i kind of spaced out of it probably more like uh, mid-july sometime over the summer um i'm going to do a little get together with you guys come and hang out and uh talk about knives for a while just you know chilling showing our knives off and stuff and then uh, a little comedy show so uh yeah, eat some food, drink some beer, talk about knives, and then uh, I'll we'll take a little half hour break and I'll I'll do a little comedy show. So um, yeah, how dare you? How very dare you, sir? Do you guys ever watch um, uh, Little Britain? And that wasn't Little Britain. That was the Catherine Tate show. I can't remember the name of it. How very dare you? Uh, first time watching the live chat. Good discussion. Thanks, Rob. Appreciate it. We are about to wrap up. I think I think about an hour and a half is long enough. And I have some videos to record for you guys tomorrow morning. And honestly, uh, I got to save my voice. I know it sounds dumb, but I am that guy now that has to save his voice because I talk for a living. And it's, you got to be careful. I got a call from my sharpening guy earlier. My wife said, who's this? So my sharpening guy, she goes, ah, geez. <laughs> that's great, Danny. That's really funny. <laughs> uh, that's hilarious. No, my, and then I have my, my buddy Mike that, a lot of, I get, I got it. I traded him for this. I, we do so many trades that right now we don't know whose knife is what. And if, if we've paid for each other for them, or if we've traded something like we totally lose track. Like I have a Manix 2XL here right now with really nice carbon scales on it. And I know it's his, but I couldn't remember the disposition of it. If I was selling it for him, if it was a trade, I, I couldn't even remember, did I trade him something for it? But anyway, he calls, he calls every now and then and Whenever I'm talking on the phone, she always says, is that your boyfriend? It's it's really funny. Uh, it's just a little joke. And I always say yes. God damn, you still talk. Yes, I am. Uh, not for much longer, though. A couple more minutes and we'll wrap it up. So, uh, that hinder have scales on the off side. It's got, yeah, it's got, this has scales on both sides. It's that thick, whatever they call the liner lock plus or whatever. Yeah, the, the Eclipse is uh, G10 both sides. But it's not that super coarse G10 like you get on the half track and the uh, and the XM18s. It's like a more much more normal sort of G10. Speaking of that, uh, Lynn Thompson replied to one of my videos. Uh, what was it about about the Formax Scout? And he said that the Recon the Recon One doesn't have as tough of or as as uh, coarse a G10 as it used to have. So. Um, does anybody have a new Recon 1? Is it less coarse G10? That might make me get another one. Because I'm apparently into huge cold steels right now. That's apparently a thing that's happening to me, so. I'd love to win that Kershaw. Nice in M390. It's nice in the 14C28N, too. It's just the knockout's underrated. It's a 
it seems like everybody just kind of forgot about it. It used to be everybody raved about them, and then they just stopped. The Hinder Eclipse is less than three inch blade length. It's right at three, and it's not less, but it's it's right at. Let me verify all that. But it's called the Hinder Three Hinder Eclipse Three for a reason. No, it's a yeah, it's it's a little over actually. It's just a tick over, I'd say. I don't know where my calipers are, or I would uh, I would actually completely verify it, but it's a little over. I'd say it's like a three and an eighth maybe, but I don't know where the hell I put my calipers, so. I did a review outside of my normal area and I moved stuff, which means now I can't find it. So I did a review of it. You can go back and, and check on it. I have was 8010 spark something inside. Danny T says slicey compensating. No, not, not that. No, it's just, uh, I just, I actually saw ones that I had that I'm getting back again. Buy yourself a cold steel, a spot XL. No, that, that's a bit crazy. My wife says I'm not allowed to have swords. I think she would qualify that as a sword. So, don't want to do that. Um, I didn't see an email yet, Ronan. I didn't want to miss out on you, so. Uh, duh, there we go. Oh. Anyway, sorry. I had to check my email for a second. All right, I think I'm going to wrap this up. Ronan, if you're still on here, please shoot me that email. And um, thank you guys very much for hanging out for an extra long episode of Bruising Blades. I will be back next Sunday, and maybe we're going to do a themed episode. I'm not really sure what we're going to do. Um, I'm going to have enough cold steels. I could do a cold steel episode. Might do that. So I'm going to have five or six of them by then. So um, that'd be fun. Maybe I mean, I'll do a cold steel episode. So we will see. Whenever I do those, it's like the first 20 minutes we talk about that one brand. Then we go off into the usual shenanigans. So don't worry about that. But again, Thank you guys so much. Thank you all for the you kicking out on the the, uh, the super chat and all that. And thanks for uh, signing up for Patreon. I got a couple of you on there. So, uh, yeah, there'll be a giveaway tomorrow on Patreon. So have a good night, everybody. See you later.